I was uh, I was going to jump into this a little bit later, but we might as well since you touched on uh, since you touched on Dr. Gary Nolan. Um, I want to ask you a couple of things because I, I want to talk to you about his opinion on the Admiral Wilson documents. But before we get into that specifically, I want I want to ask you, um, given your interactions with Gary and also just taking into account what we already know about his public facing involvement in this uh, in this push for more transparency on the UFO issue. How far into the fold do you feel Gary Nolan is when it comes to uh, like the, the primary network of influences of government behavior on the subject of UFOs? Because he speaks very confidently about there being a cover up. He speaks very confidently about the internal opinion in government that this is not human. How close to the developing narrative of UFOs and how the government handles the subject do you feel Gary Nolan is? I know for a fact he's far closer than people realise. Uh, I mean, he's he's extremely uh, connected to, uh, obviously, Lou Elizondo, uh, Eric Davis, uh, Hal Putoff, uh, all of the people who are, if you like, the public face of efforts to um, make the public aware that there's a really interesting story here to be told behind this mystery. Um, but on his own admission, and this is something I explore with him in my interviews with him, which, uh, by the way, we'll be doing a much longer version of our uh, documentary as a, a a podcast for Need to Know, the podcast I make with um, Bryce Zabel. We're, we're running in a vodcast audio and video, um, a very long, probably about 90 minute extended version of selected excerpts from interviews, including interviews with Gary Nolan that will be going up on the Need to Know vodcast uh, as a seven news special uh, that goes into a lot of the detail that we're talking about here. And in that, I mean, as you've rightly noted, Gary makes the point that he believes that there is some kind of a non-human intelligence behind what we're talking about here. He categorically expresses the view that what we're talking about here is, um, this is this is an intelligence which may or may not be physical. He talks about the possibility that it could be some kind of consciousness, but it's certainly manifesting itself as an apparent technology, uh, physical objects that are being manifested in our um, atmosphere and indeed under our oceans and indeed in, in orbit. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in his cautious scientific way, he's expressing the view that there is clearly an intelligence here. And I think that's astonishing. You know, when you basically start talking about the fact that there is a, a non-human intelligence that is capable of displaying what appears to be highly advanced technology, we're in a completely new paradigm. We are. We are in a completely new paradigm. And I think one of the primary catalysts, at least one that I hope to see being a primary catalyst, will be the discussion of what's already been retrieved, recovered, re-engineered in the Black programs. Because we, this is something that's kind of leading on from Gary Nolan, because we know that it was uh, Dr. Gary Nolan who briefed Congressman Mike Gallagher on the Admiral Wilson documents prior to the congressman yep. leading the uh, the congressional hearing on unidentified aerial phenomena where he questioned two Pentagon officials and what the US government knows. According to their very brief and restricted review of the situation, they were asked by Mike Gallagher if they were aware of the Admiral Wilson leaks or the Eric Davis notes. Uh, they, they denied any knowledge of them. Uh, but I felt for some time now that the Admiral Wilson leaks are a strategic card that is being played or is going to be played at the right time. And that this group of shakers and movers, Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Hal Putoff, Eric Davis, Dr. Gary Nolan, you know, and, and others obviously in the process in the background, um, are moving this card into the playing field. The fact that Gary Nolan used his opportunity to provide a line of questioning for Congressman Mike Gallagher, and he chose the Wilson documents, should speak volumes to their legitimacy. Here we have a world-renowned Stanford scientist, highly respected in his field and highly connected to those within government who are moving the UFO disclosure ball down the field. And he chooses this series of leaked documents as the most vital thing for Mike Gallagher to question these officials on. And then he even told us that he briefed Gallagher during his interview with Tucker Carlson. So my question to you, Ross, is do you believe that the Admiral Wilson documents 
are a strategic card that's going to be played? And is this why Gary Nolan is being so publicly vocal about them? It's not a question of belief, it's knowledge. I know for a fact that the Admiral Wilson document is absolutely integral to what is hopefully soon to unfold, at least in private hearings in the Congress. I mean, let's let's explain to your listeners and viewers what we're talking about here. The implications of the Admiral Wilson document are that there is a an apparent transcript or at least a memo that records an alleged conversation between astrophysicist Dr. Eric Davis and Admiral Tom Wilson in, I think, 2002, ironically, in a car park outside the offices of EG&G, the notorious Area 51 logistics firm in Las Vegas. And It should be emphasized right from the head that Admiral Tom Wilson, the former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, categorically denies that any such conversation took place or that he has ever made any such statements. So with that in mind, let's proceed to what the document actually says. The document purports to be a record, a very detailed record of a conversation that took place between Davis and Wilson. where Wilson basically described the efforts that he had made to try to investigate claims that were put to him by Dr. Stephen Greer in a meeting in 1997, where Greer basically revealed to him allegedly code names that he was not familiar with, that when he investigated those code names inside the Pentagon, Admiral Tom Wilson purportedly discovered a covert hidden UFO, UAP crash retrieval program that was concealed inside very secure secret special access programs uh, that were hidden in a specific part of um, an office inside the Pentagon. And what it described essentially was that the United States had allegedly recovered craft, alien technology, and that moreover, that alien technology had been deliberately withheld from the purview of Congress and various oversight bodies by concealing it inside private aerospace, inside a private aerospace company. And what the document purported to record was Admiral Wilson's frustrations at when he discovered the existence of this project, the obdurate resistance by that private aerospace company in allowing him to find out anything about the program and uh, his eventual discovery and admissions from the aerospace company that, yes, they did have alien technology, that it was concealed and that he was not to talk about it, and moreover, that he was told to shut up about it by his superiors in the Defence Intelligence Agency. Now, it's one hell of a conspiracy, and I've never known quite what to make of the Admiral Wilson document because... Um, You know, there are some people who say, including Admiral Wilson, that it's a hoax, that it's not true, that it doesn't record accurate events. Um, But one thing I'm very, very sure of is that the provenance of the document is very clear in my book. I know for a fact that it came from the estate of Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the Apollo 14 lunar module pilot, and that Edgar Mitchell was probably sent it by either Eric Davis or Dr. Hal Putoff shortly after the conversation allegedly rec- occurred. And what interested me in the interview that I did with Professor Gary Nolan a few weeks ago is when I asked Gary Nolan about the Admiral Wilson document, it was very much in the context of the, the general claim pushed indeed in part by people like Lou Elizondo, the former head of the Pentagon's UFO program, that that there there was retrieved technology of some kind, or as as Lou refers to it, exotic material. Other people have been more frank. But basically, in the context of that conversation, I then went for it and decided to ask Professor Gary Nolan, um, does he know anything about the Admiral Wilson document? And he said, Yes. I asked him, does he think it's genuine? And he said, yes. Uh, He said, I know Eric Davis. and Eric is of a kind of character. It's impossible for him to lie. And then I explained the significance of that document, which is that Tom Wilson, the Admiral, allegedly had a conversation with Eric Davis where he imparted his discovery that was allegedly a secret UFO reverse engineering program going on inside 
either the US government or private corporate aerospace where they were hiding, allegedly, a recovered spacecraft. It was being hidden, supposedly, inside private aerospace, according to the memo, in a private aerospace corporation. And I put it to Gary. I said, look, Gary, the journo in me, the journalist in me, thinks it's highly implausible for the simple fact that in America, everything leaks. You know, it's impossible to keep a secret like that. And Gary went, well, this is an example of it leaking. And, uh, you know, he made the point that, yes, the memo had eventually come to public awareness. And I, I, I said, OK, but, but how sure are you of the provenance of the memo and, and what the implications are of what's inside it? And he basically told me that he, he's known about the memo for many, many years before it even became public. And he's aware of the conversations. And without naming names, he satisfied himself that he believes that it's a genuine document and that it records an, an accurate account of events. And um, he said to me, crucially, well before this came to light, I already knew of the document because Eric was part of a group that I was associated with around this. And I respond to him uh, and I say, the implications of that are mind blowing, Gary. And he goes, yeah, yeah. In this conversation, you've told me that you believe on evidence that there is non-human intelligence of advanced technology on this planet. And he goes, right, advanced capabilities. Now, I don't know whether it's a technology per se, because I'm leaving open the idea that it's some form of consciousness that is non-material. I might say to my colleagues out there, I know this all sounds completely crazy, absolutely crazy, but if you've seen the things that I've seen, you would only be able to come to a similar conclusion. Wow. I know, again, my reputation takes a hit. I'm sure there are prizes and other things that I'm never going to get because I'm talking about this. That's nowhere near as important as the subject matter to me. And I say to him, I put it to him, I say, the best science is when you go against the grain. And he cites Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And he says, well, Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, Eventually, the anomalies and the things that don't fit the picture add up to the point where you can't ignore it anymore. That's what has just recently happened. We're looking, we're watching a Kuhnian moment. Now, Gary's very cautious. He's obviously not, not going to name names and say who he's spoken to or who's imparted the information to him. But when you have a Nobel nominee, Stanford professor, with his incredible pedigree, basically saying that, I think we all need to start sitting up and noticing and, and listening. At what stage do we stick our head in the sand as mainstream media and basically say, oh, this can't possibly be true to, because it's too confronting and because the Sydney Morning Herald or the New York Times or the, the, um, the Washington Post hasn't said it yet. The reality is that the mainstream media is way behind the eight ball on this issue. And it's only slowly going to wake up, I think, when hearings start on the hill. And believe me, I know for a fact this is independent of any conversation I've had with Gary. I know for a fact that those hearings are going to very soon start on the hill and they are going to be momentous. <laughs>